Hello, friends. Dearly beloved, we love to come into your presence again this afternoon, knowing that you are gathered around the Word of God, that you don't only appreciate the gospel crusade, but all the messages that come over the radio station, that you take the good out of each one, and we're hoping that you can find something in the next 30 minutes that will satisfy your longing, that will help to edify your soul, for we realize that Jesus is coming soon. We know that he's the one who saved us from our sins. He's our propitiation. He's our advocate between us and the Father. Glory be to God. I'm glad that we have a Jesus in heaven that loves us. He loves us much. And so does the Father, or he would not have very near bankrupt heaven when he sent his word down and closed in a veil of flesh to be a propitiation and to watch him writhe in pain upon the cross, the rugged cross of Calvary, that he could shed his precious blood to save us. Oh, I'm glad that we've got that kind of a Lord. We're going to be a-looking just in a few minutes, a very few minutes, at the 8th chapter of St. Luke. Luke, the 8th chapter, and the 5th verse, just in a few minutes. But in the meantime, we want to thank those of you who have helped us. And as this is on tape, if we had the opportunity... When this program is being played this Sunday, we are going to be in a baptismal service, we hope. So you pray that we have entered in to the presence of God one more time. Now as I look at St. Luke, the 8th chapter and the 5th verse, it said, A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and choked it. And others fell on good ground, and sprang up, and bare fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Yes, we're thankful that we have the opportunity to hear, aren't we? Praise God that he give us a set of spiritual ears as well as our earthly, our natural, our carnal ears. And have you got, as the old uh, C.B., Talkers say in their conversation, have you got your ears on? Oh, we love, I know those who I'm talking to today are Christians, but I love to talk to them and preach to those who are listening that they can turn around and pray to, for those who are not in the ship of safety, who are not in the same ship with the Lord but are tossed to and fro out upon the sea of sin, and someday could be overturned. Someday could be choked right in the sea wherein they've been all their life. Yes, we like to talk about them. Oh, those that are potential Christians, those who belong to the Lord because he bought the earth, he made the earth in the first place, and now he's come to redeem them again. And we love to talk to them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We love, those are the ones that we love to talk to. As those who would be potential. Those who um, would listen. Stop and listen to what 
the Spirit is saying unto the churches. He said, And a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. You know, the word is being scattered yet today. It's being spread. It's being preached. And it's been, there's some, no doubt, with what are in the church that are sitting right under the pastor's uh, voice that are, well, they're there every Sunday morning and probably very near every Sunday night that they're there. Listen, and still have not got the Spirit of God the way that God would have them to be saved. There's those who are sitting there, and he, the preacher, is a preaching this word. It's being sung out of the hymnals. There's courses being sung, and there's some still that it doesn't mean anything to. That they've got their mind on the cares of this world, that it's not, don't mean anything to them, Maybe husband goes to church with wife, or maybe wife goes to church with husband just to be with them. Maybe it's that. But we've got to realize that there is such a thing as salvation that the Lord would love us to, for us to acquire at his expense. He's done paid the freight. And are we going to pick up the baggage? Are we going to accept what he wants us to have? Or are we going to be one of those that fell by the wayside and that the birds come along and what they didn't pick up they trod under their feet? Oh, listen. Yes, the word of God. I love to think about it. The word of God as it's being spread. There's been times that I know that, oh, I was raised by a, a godly mother and a father that didn't like to hear the name of Jesus trodden underfoot. And uh, I've had godly grandparents, and I was raised up that. But there was a lot of times that I knew in my head what was after the, this life on earth, but I just didn't pay any attention to it. I had my mind on other things I couldn't afford the time for Christ to dwell with my life, to dwell in my heart. I couldn't afford it because I had that, I wanted all that time to myself. Yes, that's the way the word was. I know that Matthew, he talks about us being the seed. Here, it's uh, the word of God is a seed. And if it fell in my heart or fell upon me, did I accept it? Is that one around you, dearly beloved, that you think so much of, that you pray for at night? Is that uh, seed resting upon his or her heart? Is it? Oh, listen, we want to rest up on their heart, don't we? We want it to get down their soul. We want it to rejuvenate their life. Uh, we want them to have a life that uh, Christ uh, would love to have them to have. Uh, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And I know that Jesus would just love to have us to pray a little more for those that are out upon the sea of sin. For you know, he said, it wasn't the will of the Father that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, and that's what I, we want to see. I have them on my heart, too. Uh, I know it, uh, and I love to see them when they talk about the Lord, when they lean toward him, when they would like to, well, they keep putting him off, I know, but we're just a praying that the day will come when salvation, conviction will crash through and they can accept the Lord's salvation. Oh, thank God. There's the type. Of, they may be upon the uh, just uh, trodden underfoot today. They may be uh, trampling the blood of Christ underfoot. Uh, you know, if we go to hell, it's our own fault. Uh, and uh, some people will say, well, if I go to hell, I'll have a lot of company. And they'll be uh, talking to a Christian when they say that. Uh, that's because that they don't realize what it is like <clears throat> 
to have the joy of God in their heart? Have you got the joy of God in your heart as you pray for those around you that you want to see saved? Oh, maybe it's your mother. Maybe it's your father. I know my wife's sister, when she started in way back there in the, the early 20s, that uh, she was a praying for her mother and father then. Praise God. And then married a Christian man, and together they preached in the Assemblies of God for better than 55 years. Oh, thank God it's not too early to start, is it? You can always go. She was not one of those that the fowls trampled underfoot. My God, my God, that we can see those who love the Lord, and I believe that you are one of them. This is just a simple lesson. It's not much of a sermon. I know it's more of a lesson. But it, and it's simple. It's right down to earth where we can all understand it. Praise the Lord. But when that seed fell, that it didn't go uh, unattended, but that that seed could bring forth fruit like it was supposed to. And I know that it can bring forth fruit uh, in other lives because it's brought forth fruit in your life and it's brought forth fruit in our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, there was some fell by the wayside and trodden down. Oh, you know, I've brought this out again once before in another sermon, that the communists, that those who, the atheists, those who hate God, the communists especially, when they come over here and they are put in the, the witness stand to, as a material witness uh, against themselves, that they will hide behind the Constitution. And the reason why that they're hiding behind the Constitution is the Fifth Amendment. You know what I mean, uh, that there won't be a witness against themselves. They don't have to be. And the reason why that that Fifth Amendment is still there is because that they didn't get the Constitution destroyed that like that they would have liked to. Uh, oh, yes. And that's what we see here. The sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed, and some fell by the wayside and was trodden underfoot. Uh, oh, I hate to see somebody going around and a kidding about uh, hell, kidding about heaven, kidding about the life here, uh, that we've got to move a little closer into the realms of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Praise in the name of the Lord. Uh, yes. It said, And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell upon a rock. And I've heard my father say that uh, you didn't want to plow very deep to raise good crops. My father didn't stay in one place very long at a time. And I have found out that since uh, I've been grown myself and had a little experience of my own, that if it's going to be a wet year, that it's all right, you don't have to plow too deep because it's going to have the moisture. And I've heard others say that the best wheat in the whole 40 acres was the back ridges of right in the middle where there, there wasn't any ground broken underneath of it, just a loose ground third upon the top, uh, that that'd be some of the best wheat. Uh, that is, if the, the weather is right. Uh, there's some fell upon rock, and it would spring up fast because it, the roots would hit the rock and here it would come. Uh, and that was wonderful if it was the same all the year round, if you had the same kind of moisture all the year round. And that's what, what we know, that when uh, it comes to be a dry year, that we want the roots to be down a little deeper where they can draw a little bit more on the moisture, and chances are uh, they can continue in their growth uh, until there's more moisture falls. Uh, we see them in church that have fallen upon the dry ground. Uh, yes, up, uh, upon the, the rocky ground. Uh, 
And I'm not talking about the solid rock Christ Jesus necessarily. I'm talking about that they didn't get a very deep experience. of It was a very shallow experience that they would have gotten. But it seemed to be an experience. Of, and it seemed as though that they sprung up. But finally, you know what? It may be a time that the Spirit hasn't come down for quite a while. It hasn't been down for quite a while. And uh, I've been in services where we've gone for maybe four or five weeks, uh, and you didn't see anything. You knew Jesus was there because he said where three or four were gathered together, there he was in the midst. But just how, what kind of a movement we made in the Spirit of that is a little different. Uh, maybe there wasn't too much going on. And when the Spirit fails to come down, then when you've got to have it anchored in your soul, then when you can't afford to have a shallow experience uh, that those roots have got to be down in the fertile soil, uh, that they've got to go down, uh, and they've got to be where they can draw upon the Spirit of the Lord, uh, that Spirit that you have, uh, the experiences that you've had, that you know that you Jesus is alive because he said that he was alive and because he's alive that we are alive and we can continue to live in the outpouring of the Spirit because we know that Jesus is coming back soon and we can look up unto him if we aren't on too shallow of an experience. If our experience is deep in the Lord and we can say he got a wonderful salvation, then that's one that can stand up under the, the well, the vehement storms of the enemy, and it can stand up under him. Praise the Lord that we don't have to succumb to the spirit of uh, uh, well, antagonistic spirit of the devil, uh, that we don't have to succumb to him because we've got it in our own heart. We've been deep. Uh, we're, we're plowed deep. As I say, that if you're from year in and year out, uh, it's good to plow deep, uh, that uh, you can always have some fruit to, to multiply and to come back. Uh, our breads upon the waters that we cast upon the waters will be coming back to us uh, because that we have a deeper experience in the Lord. Yes, some fell upon the rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. All the heat got too strong, it, and that's the same thing with us. We get uh, back out into the world uh, and uh, upon going to school or going to our job or going somewhere else uh, and getting in with the public the heat gets too strong. They begin to make fun, and uh, we can't stand it because we don't have the root uh, down far enough. Uh, because that we haven't rooted our souls uh, into the solid rock Christ Jesus uh, far enough. Uh, oh, glory. Just let us go down a little bit deeper into the, the Spirit of the Lord, and we'll not be sorry that we did uh, Praise God. Have you got some friends like that that um, are in and out because that they can't stand up under the persecution of the Lord? They can't stand up under the persecution of the world, I mean, up under the test of the Lord. You know the Lord don't tempt us. Sometimes he tests us, but he doesn't tempt us. Uh, praise God, and can we stand up under it? Can the, our friends stand up under it that we're praying for? He said, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Oh, I think about that, that they was planted. And here they come up to uh, how many times we went out in the garden. In the years that I was able to work in it, my wife, she still is able to work in it. But to see this, the, the plant coming up, seeing the potatoes come up or the beans come up or the corn come up and there'd be all kinds of weeds come up around it. If it wasn't taken care of, it would be choked out. But this said in thorns, and I know just how that is because uh, it seems as though I know that they tell me that a weed is a plant whose virtue has not been discovered but there's a lot of them that hasn't been discovered in the garden yet. 
And the thistle is not one of them because that was a curse. But we've got to keep it cleaned out. And that's one of the things that we've got to try to preach on Sunday morning and Sunday night and on Wednesday night and any other time that we had a service or, or we're two or three are gathered together is to help keep the thorn cleaned out uh, around them. Oh, that one that we love so much. Can we keep the cares of the world cleaned out from his life or from her life? Can we keep those cares away from them and so that they can grow, so that they can grow in the, in the admonition and the nurture of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, that the thorns is not going to choke them out. Uh, you know that they'll be saved. Uh, and uh, then, then what happens? Uh, well, they'll sit there and they'll sing the songs of Zion when the saints go marching in and when we all get to heaven. And maybe they'll even get to clapping their hands. Uh, that'll be on Sunday morning. And the next Saturday night they're in a, in a show that's not, uh, it's not fit for it for anyone to see. And I've thought about these X-rated shows uh, that it's not fit for our children to see. And if it's not fit for the children to see, I wonder if it's fit for the adults to see. But they'll go on out and they'll see it and then back, be back in Sunday morning in the church again and Sunday night maybe and singing the songs with us and maybe finally get up enough courage to get up and testify. But you know, that's not right uh, because that's the thorns that are growing as well as the plant itself. Can you still pray that that loved one of yours can grow? You can see, oh no, he hasn't sold the cigarettes away, and I don't preach them into hell either. It just hurts the testimony is all. They haven't, they'll still attend the picture shows, They'll still be out with the gang on Saturday night, maybe going places that they shouldn't have, and then come back and are in Sunday school on Sunday morning, church Sunday morning, maybe Sunday night. Are you praying for them that the thorns will finally die? Are you trying to injure the thorns? Are you telling them that they can't uh, can't survive among the thorns like that to get them out of their life, whether back and forth, where they seem to be an in and outer? Are you praying that God can take over their whole life? Oh, thank God, the day will come that if we can keep the thorn cleared out, that's why we've got to teach it in Sunday school, what the thorns will do to our life, how it will choke our spiritual life out and cause us to not be able to see the heaven above, that the thorns will outgrow the stalk itself. The thorns will outgrow the vines that we have planted, the beans, the corn, the taters, whatever. That the Yes, that the thorns, the cares of this world will finally become great and they'll finally choke out the one that we love, if we can't get the thorns out of the way. We've got to teach while they have life. There's no use to teach a dead person, is there, a corpse something because it's too late, isn't it? But we can teach as long as that there are life, as long as there's life in the vessel we can teach. And then make them take their vitamins in, and maybe they can outgrow the thorns and help us to pull them up. Help us to unroot, uproot the thorns and the thistles and the ragweeds and what have you. Oh, listen, Get the thorns will choke them out if we don't keep them going. Can you say amen to that? Aren't you glad that you got the thorns out of your life? That you can see Jesus, that you can continue to grow? Because he said, and others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. Matthew said some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. Luke here says a hundredfold. That's the kind that we like, isn't it? Is a hundredfold. And I don't care what kind of a letter I get. I'll take that thirtyfold. I'll 
says, I'll take the 60 fold. Oh, I love the 100 fold, yeah. But that one that says, Brother William, we hear you and we love to hear your message on radio. And that's all they said. That was well appreciated. That was that fruit that growed up. That, yes, it sprang up and bare fruit a hundredfold. That seed really worked. The seed, the word of God that was scattered in our direction. I'm thankful to God that he can give it to us. That he can give us something to bring on the air every week. It's because God's people have prayed it down upon the evangelist. That they are bearing fruit as well as the evangelist when the gospel crusade is being scattered upon the air. Oh, yes, we want to see it bring forth fruit. Thirty, sixty, and a hundred fold. Those that can go to church every Sunday. They can go every Sunday morning and every Sunday night and in the middle of the week. Those who can have their prayer at night, reading in the Bible at night, and having their prayer at night. Those who can have a smile for someone else. Those who can pray for those that are in trouble. Those, and we can sympathize with them. Oh, we may not have the compassion that Jesus had, but we can still sympathize with those that are in agony. Yes, we can be bringing forth fruit. A hundredfold. I'm thankful to God that there's those who gather around the gospel crusade 2.30 every Sunday afternoon and say, God, bring forth fruit in those who are listening. Praise the Lord. God, help us to pray another sermon down. Lord, help us to have a smile for that one that's downtrodden, that one who seems like that the world is caving in on them. Oh, thank God that there's those who can bring forth fruit a hundredfold. Father in heaven, we're thankful, God, that the sower went forth to sow seed. We're thankful, God, that Jesus one day come down upon the earth in the form of the word of God and begin to spread seed upon this earth. Oh, yes, Lord. And that there was seed that fell upon the heart that had been prepared for the word of God to fall in. That the seed has been there, that there can be those who can grow up in the admonition and the nurture of the Lord, who can be more like Jesus and can quote the scriptures when it comes time that the spirit of God can aliven the spirit and the word of God in our hearts that we can spread seed anew to those around us God that we can continually lean upon the word of God and that we can pray that souls will be saved and lives will be filled with your spirit in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. And until this time next Sabbath afternoon, this is Evangelist Gordon Williams returning you to your announcer.